So uh, welcome back to the channel. This is another tool review slash laser giveaway. Um, this intro unfortunately has to become quite long in order to cover all of the aspects of the giveaway. But um, I do suggest that you listen through the whole intro and read the official rules in the description because these giveaways on my channel have been spammed in the past and apparently it is a widespread problem on YouTube. So to get all the the, the boring stuff out of the way first, this is a, a laser giveaway. There's no purchase necessary. It's not any sort of spam or whatever. The only thing you have to do to enter the giveaway is leave a comment. Um, the giveaway lasts about exactly a week. I usually post these videos on Sunday at noon and then I pick a winner the following Sunday at noon. I announce it on the channel. Uh, I also do an alert post on my page. I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did with the last one as well. I put a comment on the original post that wins as well as a pinned comment on the page asking you to email me. If anyone contacts you in any other way other than that, um, don't respond to them, it's spam. If anyone asks you to spend them money, don't respond to them, it's spam. This is a free contest, it does not cost anything. If anyone contacts you asking for money or tells you you win before the contest is over, that is not me. So just a heads up about that. Um, like I said, there's official rules in the description. Um, everybody should read those, but this is pretty straightforward. These companies are giving me these lasers for tool reviews. Um, I don't need a ton of these. I'm only really planning on keeping two in the shop and the second one's really just in case the first one breaks. So the goal of this is to not only fulfill the obligation to the company, because I do enjoy testing out tools in general, but also to get these lasers in the hands of as many people as possible because I do think they're really cool, cool machines. So that's kind of the nitty gritty of the contest. Like I said, you just, all you have to do is leave a comment um, and uh, the comment, I use a, a computer program to pick the comment. I That's the easiest way to do it, to remove any sort of human bias that might come about with these sorts of things. I, I leave it up to a machine to do it. With that said, the way I avoided the spam in the last contest, which seems to work pretty well, is all the comments for this particular video are held for review before they're published. So if someone is trying to spam, their comment will go to a, a different inbox and I can approve all the comments before they're made on the page. So if you leave a comment and you don't see it right away, that's just because I do have a business. I'm not on YouTube all the time. So I'm not gonna be on there immediately approving all the comments, but that is, is basically the gist of that. As far as the machine, this is the Sculpt Fun S30. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I did not know when I got this that this was a five watt machine. Ever since I kind of switched gears from testing the lasers for personal use to testing the lasers to giving them out, I've pretty much just been going through and telling everyone to send them to me because I, like I said, the goal is to get these in as many people's shops as possible. Um, so I didn't realize that this was a five watt machine. And to be perfectly honest, I probably would have turned it down had I known that because I had the assumption that the five watt machines were kind of antiquated at this point compared to the 10 watt machines, which are more popular. And I'm happy I don't really read my emails very thoroughly because I was pleasantly surprised by this machine, as you will see in the video. So with this one, what I decided to do, there's no really final build project. What I wanted to do, because mostly I'm using these to, to engrave and cut lumber, but a lot of people are doing other things with them and want to know the capabilities of them. So this video is solely testing this 5 watt laser on a variety of materials um, to see what the capabilities are. So if you're not into just repetitively seeing lasers do the same things, this video is not really for you. But I wanted to make this because um, now that the holidays are here, I, I have four lasers left to give away in the shop, make videos on them and whatnot. I haven't really been getting any more emails. They kind of came in a, in a clump. 
So I don't know if I'd be getting any more five watt lasers. So I kind of wanted to really run this one through its paces before I, I gave it away. And I'll probably be doing the same sort of style video for a 10 watt laser as well with one of the other ones I have left in the shop. I admit they're not the most interesting, but at the same time, I do get a lot of questions aside from this being a giveaway about what these can do. So I thought it would be smart to, to really kind of test these on things other than, than mainly cutting wood. So that is going to be the basic gist of, of this video. And then obviously if you want some, if you're interested in this machine other than for the giveaway, I will have all the links for the company and the description um, in the description box. Um, like I said, I was pleasantly surprised by this. And for someone who is not utilizing this for a business, someone who's a hobbyist, um, after testing this out, I can easily recommend there's really no point in buying a super expensive machine because this five watt laser pretty much did everything I asked of it for, for the video. So a couple notes about the construction of this machine. This machine's on par with all the other ones I've done especially the ones with the extruded aluminum frame that the uh, gantry rides on. I would say this construction's on par with the Atom Stack model. Um, the Dakota and the, the Longer Ray and a couple of those other ones are a little bit sturdier construction, but I had no issues. This one was, was pretty easy to put together as well. Um, the big downside in the design of this is while this one has limit switches, you can see there's one on both axes, and that basically stops the machine so that you can set it up in the program to have them home. Um, I do prefer that over ones that don't have that. My problem with this is not only is the are the electronics exposed, and most people are using these in workshops, and I know people make covers for them, which you really should, but all these exposed electronics, um, they just gather dust. But also the wires for them are long so that you have enough wire for your travel path. But that means you just have these loose wires hanging out off of the machine. Now, the thing about this is these sorts of design elements are what are going to bring the price point of some of these machines down. So if this was a machine I was keeping in the shop, I would make it so that these, I would probably make some sort of little cover for this and, and be able to permanently attach these to the frame so that they weren't so loose. So that's not a huge deal, but as um, a, a pro and a con list, that would be a big con for me. One of the nice pros is, is the upper gantry actually rides on a metal track versus these rubber wheels. I have been reading things about people that use these long term these rubber wheels start to wear down, which makes sense. So companies are starting to utilize this metal track in, instead, which obviously will have a much longer life lifeline of, of wear and tear. Another big pro is this machine in the box comes with an air pump, which I really like. Across the board with all sorts of products, I don't like buying something that in order to use it um, at optimum Capacity requires buying outside products. These machines, unfortunately, you always see me using the honeycomb bed, but as I've said before, I got the this one for free through the companies, and I've just been using the same one um, from the company that sent me the first machine. So that's not a huge deal for myself, but you can DIY these honeycomb beds. But stuff like the air pump, you really need for these and it's kind of over in the corner but I have an air extractor over there that was also given to me and you really should be using that as well for these machines so the aftermarket products to safely get up and running can also be quite expensive so while I don't love these loose wires um, the added air pump kind of makes up for that and it works seamlessly with the design you could see the hose runs right up to the gantry and into into the laser but that's kind of a very quick overview 
of some of the design elements of the, the skull fun. So like all of these machines, I construct them, I hook them up to my computer. Some of them do require drivers, some of them do not. This one, I didn't even come with a USB or an SD card. So this is the first time plugging it in, putting the settings in Lightburn. It homed perfectly. Um, usually if you have problems with the tension of your belt, this is where you'll notice it. The machine will make some terrible noises. You can adjust the belt tension and then it starts working. And like all of the other ones, the first thing I'm gonna do is engrave my logo just to make sure everything's working and get a base ideal of how well this laser is gonna work. So I just import my, import my logo into the program. It's actually a JPEG, so these machines will cut different sort of files. They are um, work best off of like SVG files, but you can get them to cut JPEGs. And I kind of boxed out the other machines and you could see the Sculpin's right on par with the quality engravings, um, the coloring is obviously a little bit different, it's a little more grayscale than some of the browner ones in, in the view, but it, it worked perfectly fine. And then this is the pile of materials I'm going to be playing around with. Some of them are things I've seen online, the other ones are ones I wanted to test out. And spoiler alert, this is pretty much the end product and I got this machine to work on pretty much everything I tried. So I, like I keep saying, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Now I'm gonna be tracking all of the settings for this. I'm gonna put a final list of all the settings I use for each material in the description. I was gonna superimpose them over the video, but to be perfectly honest, it takes a lot of extra time. And I actually go back and reference these videos for numbers in, in my own shop. And it's easier for me, at least if I have a list than having to watch a whole video to get some numbers. So I started off small with wood veneer and I was gonna work my way up to see what this could cut through. I downloaded some files I got on Etsy because the logo takes a while to engrave, especially with a five watt laser. So I found some simpler files to test out. So I wasn't in the shop for two weeks doing, doing these tests. So this is just a simple test. It cut through veneer very quickly, 16th inch veneer, and then it cut through eight, eighth inch ply very easily as well. And then here is quarter inch ply. I chose this particular uh, B because I thought it was, it was entertaining, but also because it has an engraving in the middle and then a cut file at the end. So you'll be able to see, see both. And this cut through quarter inch uh, plywood without a problem. So this is where I was started to get pleasantly surprised about this because I didn't think these lasers would be as capable as the 10 watt by far, and, and they work quite well. So then I tried out half, uh, half inch ply um, just to see if it would cut and it would cut through but you have to do so many passes in order to do it that it starts to burn the bottom of, of the, the the plywood you could see it see it right there this wouldn't be an issue for me i'm not really planning on cutting anything much bigger than quarter inch for the foreseeable future so then just to get an ideal of how this would work on a larger scale project, because for most of this video, I'm just doing smaller pieces. I did take that entire Etsy file and cut them all out. Um, my nephews were actually visiting and they thought these were pretty cool. So it worked out perfectly. I can cut the whole, the whole file and then, and then give them the little coin plugs that are left over. So you can see, obviously this is spread up, but this machine moves pretty quickly. The main difference you're gonna see in these five watt versus these 10 watt machines are gonna be the variety of materials they can cut, because as you get more powerful, the options do get a little bit wider with the materials you can cut, but mainly the speed, how fast these files are going to be cut. Now you can see on the back, and I've had this problem with every laser just because of the varying of or, more organic materials. It didn't cut through fully on some of them. I was able to use a uh, uh, X-Acto blade in order to get them through, but it cut all of these, these little B coins w without a problem. But that's the main thing is going to be speed. So if you're a hobbyist and you don't have timelines necessarily for these things, um, a five watt laser that's gonna move slower than a 10 watt laser is not gonna be an issue for you. So the next thing I wanted to try was foam because I have made stamps before out of foam and also some of these thinner materials that cut much faster than wood. It's a great way to not only test files, but also um, play around with, with different, different end results. 
So the first settings I use actually cut through the whole piece completely. So I lowered the, the, the settings a little bit in order to get the, the edge cut, but then the center just engraved. And foam cuts really, really quickly. You can see at some points it does go through, but in general, that middle part is an engraving. And this is not the best example, but that piece that was cut out, this is how you kind of make some, some very quick stamps with, with foam. Um, just glue them onto a hard surface and then you could stamp some pieces. So next up was some rubber. I got this from Lowe's. I think it was a couple dollars a sheet. This is in the plumbing aisle and you could use it to make um, custom size washers. Obviously we're not doing that now. We're using it to cut. Same sort of ideal behind this. You can make stamps out of it. Um, various other things you can do with rubber. Probably not something I'll be using quite frequently, but the, the goal of this was to kind of see the capabilities of, of the machine. So after a couple test files, I got it perfect to the point, almost you could see it, it didn't cut on the sides, um, but it was close enough that I could just, once again, use a knife to cut it out. You can see the nice thing about this is there's going to be some flexibility. So if you want something to wrap around a product, something like rubber is going to be pretty convenient. Next up, once again, I got these at Lowe's. These are essentially chimney siding. And I got this because these lasers will not engrave metal, but they will engrave a, a, a coated surface on top. So while, like I said, they won't necessarily cut metal, there are some workarounds for these less powerful machines in order to get the images you want on materials. Now, technically on the website, the, the coating on this aluminum flashing is a black baked enamel finish. So that is what it's on there. And you can see it, it engraves that file perfectly. Now, like I said, this will not cut through aluminum, so I didn't even test that. But as far as engravings, um, and I'm doing the, the super efficient scratch test with my fingernail. That's the quickest way to tell if it actually goes through the surface. And then because I was pretty happy with the B, I try some of these I will try my logo out on. And once you wipe it off, which I just did, you can see it leaves a very clear image. That line at the bottom is because I don't have this machine stamped down because I was just doing small testings. Usually I, I stamp the, I, attach these to the tabletop and I had hit my my vent for that one which shifted the machine mid cut and that's why um, there was that line there. Then I tried out some cork once again not really a material I'm planning on using in the shop too much but I got these coasters off Amazon pretty cheaply. I didn't align this perfectly. You could obviously tell it's not perfectly centered. I was going through these tests pretty quickly but it was able to engrave the bee pretty well. Um, I did multiple passes for the circle and you could see once I remove a piece that it only went about a quarter of the way down. So this is not an efficient machine for cutting cork. Not only could I not get it all the way down, I probably would have had to do like 20 passes to do it and then you run into burning issues again. But engraving it worked really well. After that I switched to fabric. I was reading somewhere you can you can use fabric for these. This is a nylon diffuser fabric. I actually got, if you watch the channel, the light boxes I made with one of these lasers a couple weeks ago, I got this to diffuse the light and it didn't really work the way I wanted it to. So I have some of this laying around. So like I said, this is like a nylon silk blend and that cut through really well without burning it. Um, when I put a black backer behind it. It won't cut through it because it's pretty transparent, but if you put a black backer behind some of these more transparent materials, um, which you'll see throughout the rest of this video, that works really well as a workaround for the laser going through the materials. So this is a canvas drop cloth, so the canvas is going to be much thicker than the nylon. So I tried that out on this as well. And I, you could see I have three tests, and the third test it cut all the way through everything because I didn't realize at the, the point that that second test actually went through. So that was kind of the optimum setting. I didn't realize like until right now when I started moving it that it did in fact go through. So you could see I have the circle cut out, but the, the center portion engraved. So that was pretty cool. This is a cool way to make patches or and stuff like that. This is a great way to make patterns, to transfer patterns onto material as well. 
And then another popular one, uh, Slate Coaster. This one I, I used um, my logo with. And once again, the settings are not optimized for this. This isn't perfectly centered. Um, these tests, running these tests actually takes a really long time. So I was trying to pump through them as fast as possible. But um, I was also pleasantly surprised with how well this, this worked on the slate. The scratch test, you could tell that it's, it's marked on there. It's just not sitting on the surface as a design. And then this one especially, once I put a clear coat on it, looks, looks pretty nice. So that is the logo on a slate coaster. So then I wanted to try a bigger scale uh, cutting. So pretty quickly, I just made, um, made an outline of my logo in Lightburn. It's very easy to do. You right click it and mess around with the settings. Now, like I said, this is a JPEG, so it's not optimized for the laser engraver, which is why you'll see those little circles and some extra stuff in the cutting. But for me, this works pretty well. And I was doing this on cardboard because I wanted to, this is something that I probably would use in the shop for making stencils and transferring patterns, a really easy way to get a perfect pattern and transfer it. Now, like I said, this is my logo, so it's not optimized for a stencil. So you'll see later, you know, there's a lot, the, the, the text is kind of floating in the middle of the frame, but this was a good way to make sure the laser worked properly around the whole gantry. It can move around and cover the whole surface area of the piece. And in general, it's just, it's just kind of pretty neat that you can cut out stuff pretty pretty accurately on, on, on materials like this fairly quickly because since this is essentially paper, it cut pretty quickly. I just lifted up the back of it to make sure it went all the way through, which it did, and then I could remove the negative space of this. And because that cut so well, I then tried engraving onto, onto the material and that worked really well because the problem with these machines are you really don't know what it's gonna look like until it starts working could easily ruin very expensive materials if something's wrong with your original file. So having some paper, if this worked on cardboard, it would work on cardstock and whatnot. Laying around, this is just a, a box from Amazon I cut up, You can t is a great way to test files before trying them out on final pieces. Now obviously you're gonna have to change your settings because the settings for a cardboard are gonna be different than other things, but it is a good way to, to test out files and see if they're gonna work first. So this was kind of a handy thing to learn to do with, with this machine. And you can see I could just pop out all the negative pieces and then that is what that looked like. And the detailing is so good that you can see it's part of this is together, but like I said, this wasn't optimized for, for cutting on the laser, but it's very, very thin pieces that this can cut. And I haven't had burning issues unless I do too many passes too slowly, which I did on the, the plywood with, with this at all. Next up was, was leather. I wanted to try leather. This one's pretty straightforward. I didn't think it wasn't going to work. I ordered this leather off Amazon because it was the fastest way to get it. I don't recommend doing that. You could see Amazon delivered it folded in half, so now there is um, a mark through the center of the leather. So if you wanted a particular color, this whole piece would have been pretty much ruined. And uh, this obviously would show up better on lighter leather, but I could only f uh, find darker on there, ship fast enough to the shop. But I'm curling this because it's hard to see on camera, but you can really tell how deeply those marks go when you curl the piece. And that is a nice clean engraving um, on leather. And then I tried cutting it. So I just put a circle around, around my logo and got the settings right. And then that cut through leather really nicely. Once again, not centered. I know so that sort of thing drives certain people crazy, but for these test pieces, um, like I said, I was moving pretty quickly. And that I tried out the B as well to kind of get the settings accurate for cutting. So then I had this clear um, acrylic sort of plexi that I use for a diffuser as well on light boxes. I wanted to try that and this is trying it with the black underneath of it and it didn't work at all. It left no mark. So then I spray painted the top of it and I engraved that. 
um, the B piece, this wouldn't cut through this at all, but you can see with the black spray paint, it's, it's mainly an issue of clear surfaces and transparent surfaces. The laser passes right through it. It needs some sort of black works best solid surface to focus on. So by adding that black material to it, it could fo focus on the top. I know it's hard to see because it is white, but if I, if I kind of twist this and you see the light catch it, it did then in fact engrave this on there. And then I just removed the black paint with some paint thinner. So that is an option. After the, the white acrylic, I wanted to try glass. So I saw online someone was using this cold galvanized compound to engrave certain materials. Um, the thing about anything with galvanized in it is you want to wear a respirator. Um, I took a welding class in college and you're never supposed to weld galvanized metal. So my assumption from that was that this is going to emit some toxic fumes. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments about how unsafe this is or not unsafe. But just to be on the safe side, I did wear a respirator with this um, and I had no issues. You could also see I made a point to show that it was vented. But this is a nice shot because you can in fact see that the engraver is picking up on the, the spray paint on top, but then on the other side it's transferring right through the glass and leaving no mark. So like I said, I did the B on this, and you could see on the one side all it does is smudge up the glass, but on the, the top part where I have the galvanized compound, it has a focus point, so it does leave, leave a mark. So after that, I wanted to try it with the black background versus the galvanized compound, and both of those worked with very different results. So depending on what kind of look you're going for. Um, now this looks skewed, that's because it is. This was moving on top of that uh, black aluminum surface, which is why it looks skewed, not because of the laser. So if you're going to be doing glass, I recommend finding a, a jig to tamp this down with. And when I use some paint thinner to remove that that compound, you can see that this does in fact leave a mark on the glass. So they're both, they're two very different looks. You could see there's more tones when using the compound versus um, the other way around. And when you're using the black background, this is etching on the underside of the glass. It's not on the top, it's etching on the underside. So since that glass was a successful run, I tried Plexi. I did the exact same thing. I didn't try this with the compound because the black was much easier to use. The compound dries pretty slowly and I couldn't get this to cut through the Plexi, but it did engrave that. And but um, when I was cutting this, you could kind of see it in this photo, there's these little tick marks. As I was cutting this, I could hear the Plexi cracking. So you might have to play around with settings in order to get that to engrave Plexi the way you want it to without it cracking. Um, and then I tried this on ceramic. This was the last test I did. I obviously have the, the galvanized compound, the black, and then regular ceramic and this engraved all of them. Once again, different looks with different compounds. You can leave the compound on there or take it off. For this one, I left it on there because since the middle's raw ceramic, you can obviously see what that would look like. Now this tile had one of those kind of faux finish coats on it, so I don't know if these engravers would, would cut through raw ceramic. You could see it kind of cuts through the design on the ceramic, but in general, all three of those worked. And then once again, here is kind of the test run of all of those products. Um, I'll put all of the settings, like I said, in the description, but it was kind of fun to play around with these materials.